This video is brought to you by Sheath to protect your cock and balls, but more on that in a moment. When you get a card banned on MTG Arena, you are refunded an appropriate wild card, most of the time. This is to allow you to essentially get a redo, a refund on a card you bought through the in-game crafting system to spend elsewhere. This system of refunds is okay, I guess. It gets a bit more difficult when you factor in other elements, like when they digitally nerf cards and don't give you refunds but at least you're getting something back. The other huge disadvantage of it is that a system like this within a closed economy where cards cannot be sold or traded is that the rest of the deck that got banned, well, even if only one of the cards got banned, they might not really be worth playing anymore. You can't trade them away and there's a limited pool of formats to play them in. In today's video, I wanna talk about the financial side of bans. That's in all formats, really, from legacy and modern to pioneer and standard and arena formats and Commander. An anecdote. In the year 2014, I'm a young and deeply franchise magic player and I buy into Storm in Modern, uh, namely Scalding Tarns and the whole shell including cantrips and rituals. I do find it funny that my first modern deck was Storm because I'm kind of known for fair white decks and playing green and white creatures and there I was trying to be a little Storm combo player like a little prick. Cards of Tarkir releases as I picked up the shell and Treasure Cruise is printed and magic is wild for a short while. I hard pivot into Blue Red Delva, which overnight becomes the best deck in the format. I buy some small bits like the Delvers and the newly printed Swift Spears, all cheap bits, but chiefly the expensive part is a play set of Snapcaster Mages. I don't remember exactly how much I paid for those Snapcaster Mages, but it was quite a bit for a hobby and I wasn't getting paid a whole lot at the bank at the time. I stomped a few FMs, I played a few other events that I did all right in. Treasure Cruise carried me, the deck was fundamentally fucking broken. Then came the Ban Hammer and it was, it was gone. Treasure Cruise was no longer Legal. The only other option for me to move back towards was Storm, making the new playshare of Snapcaster Mages become either Commander Fodder, Trade Fodder, or Gather Dust in my folders. The point I'm getting at is that Treasure Cruise was not an expensive card to get banned, and I wasn't upset about the the common that I got from drafting cards of Target and put into my modern deck. It's cool to see powerful cards come in at common. The problem was that Snapcaster Mage didn't really fit elsewhere. There was a little bit of play in Twin, if I remember correctly, a little bit of blue red, uh, blue white control, but Snapcaster Mage kind of lost a bit of its value there, but it retained some because of other decks and other formats and being able to trade it or sell it away. Delver stopped being a deck after Cruise. I was just lucky enough that I could pivot back into Storm there, but if someone didn't have the other Storm pieces, they would have had to then find another deck or pick up more bits and it's one of the uh, things we don't talk about enough in bans, is what people have to do once their card is banned. And all of this is not necessarily doable on Arena either, when you think about it, because you can't sell cards. So if the archetype just goes dead once a certain card is banned, well, fuck you. You're shit out of luck. Uh -huh. It's these kind of conundrums on the financial side of MTG bans that I want to talk about in today's video. Before we do that, let me save your balls. This video is brought to you by Sheath, giving your balls the love and comfort they deserve. These are the most comfortable underpants I have ever owned, and that is not an exaggeration. Look at this lad. He's enjoying them. And this one. Sheath underwear was designed by a military veteran who had his cock and balls getting pretty sweaty on military exercise. You know the situation. It's called the bat wing, right? You have a sweaty ball, it's stuck to your leg. You're trying to spread your legs like inconspicuously while on a train or a bus, trying not to be spotted, and your ball is just spreading away from your leg like the skin of a bat wing. The solution is that they have a separate compartment for your cock and another for your bollocks to allow you and your bits to breathe and not get all squished and sweaty. And I'm English in the middle of a heat wave, so I know a little bit about sweaty cocks and or balls. So click the link below and use the code Kenobi at checkout or go to sheathunderwear.com forward slash Kenobi and get 20% off your order and give your balls a break from sweaty leg sticking and squashed train rides. That's sheathunderwear.com forward slash Kenobi or just use the code Kenobi for 20% off. And I did the whole ad read without mentioning that piss was stored in the balls or talking about the production of cum. I'm quite... I'm quite proud of myself. I was recently laughing about the wildly fucked up metagame percent shares of Legacy and Modern on Twitter. That's right, I was tweeting. Something that I really need to stop doing. In Legacy, Delva continues to be 26.5% of the metagame share thanks to Merc Tide and a selection of blue spells, whilst Modern is more diverse but still with its own problems. 15.6% of the metagame is blue-red Merc Tide, 10% are various Yorion 4-color and 5-color money piles that are incredibly expensive. And that might seem not that bad, but it gets worse when you really dig down to what's happening. Both the Living End and the Crashing Footfalls decks are facilitated by more Modern Horizons cards. 
cards, Charlotte's Agent, Force of Negation, and similar, which means you could probably pile them into a selection of cards enabled by certain Modern Horizons cards, Charlotte's Agent. The format is basically 50% or more Modern Horizons cards at any one time, and 50% is probably quite a, a kind percentage. It's probably quite a bit more than that if you did all the math. Modern Horizons block constructed is not why I fell in love with Modern. So against my better judgement I was tweeting, and I was asking the hypothetical of when is enough enough? When will Wizards fucking do something about all this? Now the only thing they can do in current circumstances is ban some shit, right? Legacy needs a real shake up to stop Delver always being the default best deck with new broken shit. Maybe Days or Ponder or Expressive Iteration. Something needs to go. And Modern's a little harder to solve, nothing is dominating as clearly, although the diverse metagame is heavily skewed towards a couple of archetypes like I said, and a lot of matches play out the same due to cards like Ragavan, Murktide, or Urza Saga being a big culprit of this. They're the default best thing to do in the format, and they just take over games. But again, it's just bans, right? Generally, what other option do they have? Put a, put a pin in that, and we'll talk a bit about that at the end. Other people joined in on Twitter. Some were memeing, some were shitposting, other people were agreeing, some people disagreeing, and some people disagreeing far harder than others, shall we say. Maybe the internet was a mistake. Something I soon realised was that people defending Force of Negation, Murktide, Ragavan, the Sagas, and any other really fucking expensive Modern Horizons 2 card, they were the ones playing them. Now, for some people, they were probably just enjoying winning with deck that were far better than other decks. Decks that have come out of nowhere, they bought into them, and they just smash conventionally good decks in modern. This is me when Treasure Cruise was legal. I was worse a player than I am now, and I was smashing people because Cruise just wasn't fair. Some of the older archetypes like Storm would struggle to fight their way out of Modern Horizons 2 lined paper bag. I'm only joking, we couldn't have a paper bag made out of Modern Horizons 2 cards because Magic the Gathering stock is just not recyclable. The world's on fire! But some of those people on Twitter were, and perhaps rightfully so, defending their recent investment. They didn't want to buy into a place out of a car that is $80 a pop to then have it banned out from under. And I find that funny that someone is there like crying through gritted teeth saying everything's Bye. As they clutch to six hundred dollars worth of cardboard, which in this case is four Merktide and four Ragavans, fucked. <laughs> But it kind of makes sense, right? We've all been burned by bands in the past, or had friends burned by bands at least. I've seen people struggle to rebuild a blue-red base deck, whether it be Tempo or whatever, add the remnants of Twin, before realising that actually the Steam Vents decks are all fucking shit at the time. How about your poor Affinity player who bought a playset of Ravagers for $150 back in the day, and now they live opalless, cry-wanking themselves to sleep over that one sexy robot in that Transformers movie? I've talked in a video about a month ago about how I kind of miss all the broken shit, but I realise that that comes from, and I said this in the video, a position of privilege. It may have made for fun tournaments or online environments to make content in or stream in. Like, first two weeks that Legacy had Loris legal was pure insanity. It just turns out like all good drug binges, they have to come to an end. There actually is such a thing as too much pussy. I'm sorry I said those words. Nah, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm in a privileged position. It's my job to have my finger on the pulse of Magic's rectum. So I get to play all the new dumb shit, and it gets banned, and things change, and things get changed up and shit, and I haven't necessarily invested in it. I'll rent cards or borrow cards, right? I get to have fun in the playground that is contemporary Magic card design, and by playground I sometimes mean dumpster fire. But when Mox Opal is an expensive card, or Oko is an expensive card, and it just gets banned out from under you, you don't have the income levels to swallow an expensive hobby item becoming useless overnight, it's fucking rough. So that brought me to an interesting sticking point, something I hadn't really considered before. The tension and the upset that comes with these cards all being so fucking expensive. I believe that Wizards will at some point have to own up some of these mistakes and fix them. That's going to involve banning cards that are pretty fucking expensive. We're lucky in many ways that Ponder might be a sticking point for Legacy as it's an uncommon, right? We're lucky that Dragon Mage Chandler was an uncommon too, because if that was a mythic, it will probably be around the price of Merc Tides right now, maybe even dearer. But banning shit that's a mythic or a rare from a premium priced product that are purposefully short printed or not reprinted enough in order to drive the demand and create new reprint equity for future sets, oh, that's gonna be fucked. In short, they're creating an environment where this thing is worse. And this will happen for Commander too. How many poor unsuspecting Timmies bought 13 hull breaches for all their decks only get absolutely fucking bodied by the ban? But maybe those people deserved it. But the problem does still hold true over there. The one example I want to bring up is Cradle. 
it's the one I often think about. I'm lucky enough to have picked up one for about 30% of its current price tag around five years ago with some trade-ins. I play it in Tatiova, and if people are okay with it, I might start to proxy it in other decks too. I'm not buying more than one, but it is basically the best land in the format. The card is legitimately fucking mad, and I sometimes wonder if it should be legal. Like, this is not me calling for a ban of this card. I love this card, and I want to play it as much as possible, and I enjoy playing it, but when people say, why is this legal? I don't immediately shrug them off. I usually look down at the 100 plus mana that I've generated that's being represented by some spin downs on the table and I ask myself when did this erection show up? But I get it the card is nuts and it's almost a thousand bucks. It is prohibitively expensive. The Moxon of the original Power 9 are, for the most part, not actually as good as Soul Ring. They're more explosive and lead to more fundamentally broken turns, but there are multiple instances and reasons, and I can do a whole fucking video on this, and I should, for why Soul Ring is pretty much better than the Moxon. The Moxon in Commander are banned, and I believe they should be, but part of the reason is how prohibitively expensive and inaccessible they are. If Soul Ring was as rare or as prohibitively expensive as the Moxon, Soul Ring wouldn't be illegal either. So the Moxon are banned, will Cradle eventually get banned for the same reasons? This is a conversation I see come up a lot where people like shout about banning fetches or, or reserve list cards and legacy, or things like Cradle and Commander, because they're so expensive, most people can't have access to them. If only there was a way we were able to play cards by proximity. But the idea of banning cards because they're expensive, considering the rest of what I've said in this video, that's a big fucking yikes for me. Look, Cradle would keep a portion of its price, but let's be honest, the primary driving point for its cost is the fact that it's the best land in EDH. Nothing compares to it, and it's never going to get reprinted, so it's only going up. Imagine you finally saving up, finally trading in a shit ton of bulk and stuff out of your trade folders at a venue, or a, a GP, a command fest, or your local store. You get your cradle, you sleeve it up, you put it in your deck, and that following Monday, Sheldon Minui tells you, sorry, you can't play with it anymore. I don't think that's going to happen, I really don't want to see it happen. But I do kind of understand some of the arguments when it's just such a fucking ridiculously busted card that is also very hard to get hold of. For EDH, there is a clear answer though. We just allow proxies, right? I am very, very, very pro proxy in any non-sanctioned environment. Hell, fuck it. I wish we could have it in sanctioned environments too, but I know that's not going to work. Wizards would never allow. For Modern and Legacy though, it's more difficult because of sanctioned play in tournaments. If we just assume proxying is off the table for this discussion, well, they have been adjusting older formats by unloading whole new design portfolios into them. The problem is that Modern Horizons can't really be the fix for a broken or messed up metagame if the cause of the broken or messed up metagame is Modern Horizons. And then, on top of all this, each Modern Horizons set, and perhaps the new Lord of the Rings 2, which I spoke about in the video this week, perhaps those cards coming into the format, that's an artificial rotation. I'm saying perhaps it's not. It's an artificial rotation where older cards just aren't good enough anymore. Your tier 1 deck becomes tier 3 overnight. You spent hundreds of dollars on getting your modern deck together, and then a new set drops, and suddenly your deck is either tier 3, or you need a dozen new staples. Literally hundreds of dollars. Hundreds of dollars worth, due to the pricing of Horizons cards, it being a premium set and all. That's some rough shit. If this carries on, we will have people become jaded, worn out, and burnt, and they will leave these formats to die. Legacy already struggles, and modern seems to be on the same trajectory, the same path. Which is weird, because modern is meant to be the legacy that doesn't have the reserve list strangling it. Unfortunately, it seems to get strangled a little bit by wizards purposefully or not, I don't know. Future Horizon sets should be print to demand, non-premium priced to at least bring the cost of new staples down in order to avoid Ragavan being an $80 loaded gun about to shoot a noob modern player in the face if they buy them and they get banned. But what do you think? That's my video. I'm not really proposing too many solutions to I don't have them, but it's something I wanted to at least put pen to paper, voice to audio, or whatever the fuck this is, and mention because I don't think we talk enough about the financial ramifications of banning cards, something that has become a, a common thing in Magic over the last two to three years. Thank you to Sheath for sponsoring this video. Your pants are really fucking comfortable. They keep my balls from getting too sweaty. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm about to hit 100k by the time this video's come out. I might be there, which is pretty exciting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon.